Dnes máme to požehnání vám představit jednu z těchto osvícených přednášek pod názvem Buddhistické příběhy Zásluha Charity a dodržování pěti pravidel a Brahma žádá odharmu První část z deseti v pořadu mezi mistriní a žáky v angličtině 3. srpna 2015 不管人在哪里我都一样反正要来还是要去也许我们要弄那个东西什么山那个什么叫什么今天西安山啊这个是有什么真吗那么久弄那个人在哪里讲的也许不对啊台湾这么小哪里有一个地方那么大的那么大的
color my life. Yeah, because of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't really need all this. Also, I'm too pale, you know, too pale. Suppose somebody see me so pale, they think, wow, oh, vegan, no good. <laughs> they don't know about karma, you know? They don't know why, why I'm pale sometimes. Okay, what is this? Oh, okay. I have to see again. My God, everybody wants me to go to their country. <laughs> and I'm only one. Yeah, the, the transcendental body can go everywhere. This is the physical body. Difficult, huh? Oh, man. I forgot my glass. I remember the dog's vegan bone. <laughs> well, I forgot my glass. You know, dog's bone, vegan bone, I remember. But my stuff, I don't. Okay, you want some? <laughs> Less food is all the same. Well, you also want it for your dogs, huh? but I don't have enough vegan bones here. These are from Taiwan, from my company. So uh, we just you know, bought some for them. <laughs> Look at Abby and Benny is smiling. <laughs> you know, right? You know this. Yeah. They're really smiling that way. <laughs> that way up to heaven. Wonderful, huh? Hey, look at the happy, happy people. Yeah, so beautiful. So, uh, how is the food today? Everybody has enough? Yes. yes. Good. Even if not enough, well, one or two days you won't die. I promise. This is a method to teach you how to die, no? Yeah. Originally, Kwani method is like that, you know? How to die properly. <laughs> how to die every day. Practice dying. <laughs> so that when you die, you don't feel terrible, yeah? And you're used to it. <laughs> what is another day of dying? But this time may be real. <laughs> we should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism, and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. There is the story about another person here, similar, huh? Okay, I told you already, I promise you to talk about the fish, yeah? Okay, thus I have heard, this from Anand again, huh? Once the Buddha uh, was in the Save country, 
in, in, in the, you know, golden garden of the billionaire named Kapkodok and the prince Kida. Mm. At that time, there was a, a rich person. He's very, very rich, but he has no son. Mm. So both of them, you know, uh, husband and wife, went all over every, every possible worshiping area to, to plead for a son. Mm. Because of their sincerity, yeah, she gave birth to a, a son, finally, yeah. And then one time, both of them went out to near the river, yeah, and playing and having picnic. And then because they're happy, so they're tossing their child up and down, up and down. This is a thing you should not do, okay? <laughs> when, when we had the king and call, they put that scene on, that the, the prince give, you know, <laughs> like rocking the, the baby uh, next to the water like that, it's, you know, uh, above the bridge. This is the thing you should not do with babies. So you might lose your hand and then you might get loose, you know, your grip, and then the baby might fall down. You don't do that on the balcony, you don't do that next to the river or any, anywhere. Hmm? Except maybe in the bed when you just cradle him a little bit, then it's okay, on bed, big bed, or on the floor, you know, carpet floor, then okay. Now, uh, so, and then they, they were, uh, the mother keep, you know, throwing the baby in, in the air and then catch him, you know, some people do that. They keep doing that. Uh, and then she was so happy, you know, and how uh, I said, distracted by the joy and then the baby fell into the water. Oh my God! She screamed for help and, you know, jumping around and then a lot of people went inside the river, go in the deep bottom, but cannot find him again. So, of course, the mother collapsed, you know, from, from, from pain and sorrow, blaming herself. For a long time, she was unconscious until people helped her to put ointments and medicine, then she regained her consciousness. At the end of this river, there was a little village, and there, there was also a very rich <laughs> family, and the rich father also has no son. And he also went different uh, worship in area, you know, wherever they think is, is very uh, successful, they keep praying everywhere, but didn't get any, didn't get any son. Mm. One day he told one of his uh, servants to go out to catch some fish with a net at the, at, the, on the, at the river. And then he caught one big, big fish and brought home. And when they open the stomach of the fish, the baby comes out still alive. Yeah. And it's even a son. Yeah. Oh, they're so very happy, this family. And then they bathe him, you know, keep make him clean everything, and then bring it to uh, the boss. Oh, the boss was so beyond himself with happiness. He thought, wow, up to now we've been praying for a son. So this is the heaven reward for our sincerity. This is a miracle. This is truly heaven sent. He believed that. Of course, huh? would you, no? You would? No. Okay. And then they, uh, of course, they take care of this child very well and give him everything he needs, yeah? Mm. And then the, uh, the other rich person, <laughs> heard that at the end of the river, <laughs> uh, one person <laughs> caught a fish and, uh, and inside the fish was a boy. Huh? So the both of them, uh, uh, husband and wife, went there and have a look. Oh, when they saw 
hey, this is my boy, you know, exactly is my boy. Because uh, the other day, my wife was playing with him and then so he dropped into the river. Um, unfortunately, you know, but this is so, so good, so good. Thanks all the gods that you caught him and now we can have our son back. And then the other one, you know, the other rich person said, you are talking what? This is my son. <laughs> God gives it to me. I've been praying all these years. So this son just suddenly came, you know, that is truly God's will. I give you nothing. This is my son, I keep. Oh, so then both of them, you know, the husband and wife will say, oh, we love our son so much and we have been in pain and sorrow all these days because we lost our son. Please, please, have mercy, return our son to us. Anything you want, we give. And the other man said, I want nothing. I am rich, powerful, what do I want from you? This is my son, so you please leave. And so back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Nah? So they could not uh, decide <laughs> what to do. And then they, both the family bring, brought the son to the king to, so that he can judge what to do, can tell what to do. So they came up and the, the one who lost the son said, Your Majesty, this is really my son. The other day my, my wife was playing with him next to the river and he, he, he fell into the river. So this is really my son. Please be, be fair, you know, and help us to regain our son. So the other one, the one who, <laughs> who found the son, yeah, also say, Your Majesty, this is my servant, you know, caught the fish. And, and then inside the fish is this son. It, it, it's not uh, from, from this family. This is from the fish. <laughs> okay. okay. So the, the, the king say, Oh my God, only one child and two family claim him. So the king, he said, okay, this child, both the family can raise him, you know, take turn to raise him. And when he grows up, uh, each family finds a wife for him. And whichever family has a son, then that son will belong to that family. Understand that? Yeah. Two wives and two families. Which wife bears the next son, then it belongs to that family. Okay? So both of them thanked the king and thought that's a, okay, it's a not too bad solution. <laughs> they want to obey the king's decision. So day after day, and you know, day turned to months and years, and both the family raised him up, and both the uh, uh, possession belonged to him, and each family. Uh, marry him a wife, okay. And one time uh, uh, he has to go to another uh, area, another city, uh, to do something. Mm. But it seems like it's a great affinity, yeah. So when he finished his business, he saw the Buddha, uh, by the way, when he was uh, going around preaching in different places. Ngẩn ngơ nào chân